biology so <laughs> so uh, just a brief introduction so uh, my name is prashant dhawan and uh, i have been kind of uh, trying to figure out and also teach biomimicry uh, the rest what i'll do is i'll try and post somewhere a little intro you can read but in a very brief way before biomimicry i was missing meaning uh, it seems like a cacophony of brilliance everything in isolation seemed very very brilliant uh, but there was a internal dissonance that i couldn't reconcile uh, so my view and my journey is with biomimicry i found meaning but i started missing money so <laughs> that's a bit of a contradiction and let's see if we can resolve that so that's about it uh, so i thought uh, i'll just give a brief presentation on biomimicry to most of you i would actually uh, apologize in advance that a lot of it you would have seen you would have known it's nothing new but well uh, you know that's a standard <laughs> set of slides i have and uh, we'll quickly go through it and uh, and after that uh, we could have a question answer session um, please feel free to ask uh, you know whenever you feel like so does that sound good anybody mm, yeah sounds oh, good okay oh, so so i'll just start with the presentation uh, okay Sorry. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, so these are some standard slides uh, which we use. So basically, I call biomimicry uh, in a way of an intentional, an intentional approach to harmonizing with the living planet rather than accidental. or interest based alignment how to make it conscious so today is 21st september and uh, we hope we are emerging from a pandemic but i don't want to lose this moment because in many ways this moment has uh, has slowed us down but in many ways uh, i have a feeling that to the larger audience which i try and uh, tell them uh that in many ways it has demonstrated something which we might have missed out it has demonstrated that the two things that we could almost stop or slow down were the economy and was our social institutions and the reason we could do that was because because they are not gravity they are our self agreement we created them and uh, maybe we've forgotten that so it's a good time uh to look at our lives in the pre covid and even right now uh busy trapped in our own imaginations and uh a lot of us all of you i'm sure already know this so forgive me but but at a major level what we've seen to be done doing is that uh we seem to be taking nature as raw material which needs to be shaped so that it fits and nourishes the economy and increasingly we are looking at each other as raw material we want to shape children we want to shape our society so that it fits and nourishes the economy and why it might be a good time to to slow down and see that the economy after all is something that we created it's a self agreement it's a servant it's a tool and if our servant has become our master then no point having any conversation which about design or anything uh i did feel like earlier also that we were competing to become less bad rather than finding out how to be good and that could be a huge error for all of us uh, i do go now i've begun going to you know going to various conferences and i find that people are saying i'm going to be 10% less polluting 20% and in a very subliminal manner being less bad seems to be becoming the new good and that's very dangerous the question is what is the good where do we look 
and i felt that it's a good time to reflect that actually everything is part of our planet this is very obvious but yet not ab- obvious because we can't pay attention why can't we pay attention because the frameworks are wrong and even though we don't individually have the capability of changing the frameworks the conversation should start the acknowledgement should start so th- though lofty it might sound i think it's important to acknowledge that we need to start shaping our economy so that it's in service of the society it becomes the servant it was supposed to be and the society should be in tune with ecology that's all in many ways uh, when i talk to students i always tell them we don't have a problem of resources we have a problem of imagination the number of molecules are the same how you arrange them that's where human uh, design comes in so it's really a problem of design we actually live on a abundant planet with very very bad imagination very very bad design uh, i believe that's the real challenge so the designer has a much bigger role than we think uh, it is it's, it's really about design why again that today we are also at an opportunity where there is so many technologies we kind of seem to be afraid of them you know it's again a very foolish thing that this is a species that creates a technology and then spends its time being afraid of it what will artificial intelligence do to me what will quantum I mean, what will it do to us it's our creation we have to decide we have to take back charge uh, you know but at the same times why am i telling all these things because i feel that uh, all these things are linked nothing is in isolation you know it gives you the ability to dream and imagine uh what probably the earlier generation of designers or engineer couldn't today quant- what do we do with these technologies or we just ignore them yeah. so we have quantum contu- computing nanotech additive manufacturing yeah, so the other t- side you have pandemics biodiversity depletion endemic poverty waste and quite honestly unemployment is also a waste let's challenge couple of things today have you ever seen an unemployed plant or animal it's a design flaw it's a system design error it's a system that cannot accommodate its parts and some of the parts who do get accommodated are usually trying to you know fidget around trying to fit better what a wasteful design uh in natural systems i mean though exactly you can't say endemic poverty you can say low nutritional waste of course is a human invention there is no waste and chronic addiction these are indicators of a design flaw we can spend our time looking busy being busy but if we have to take the ball straight uh, it is a design error and it can be rectified the question is where do we look for answers and sometimes the answers might not be within our intellect and the other thing is what do we want to do with these capabilities give a 3 crore salary to a iit guy to make the next smartphone or do we want to fix these problem these are important fundamental questions because these signals that we send determine you know the direction our society or the design of our economy the design of our uh, planetary systems takes so th- these are just some examples that actually when we start looking at nature and that is difficult given the kind of uh, planet we have created how do we calm our anxiety forget everything learn to become children again and just look then we see that all around us so many things that we think we have invented are already happening for million of years you know like these days you have sanitizers ants have been using sanitizers in their nests on their bodies for millions of years these are wood ants there are other kinds of ants which actually uh, infect each other uh, with a little bit of infection uh, while not letting high infection on any single ant so that's your vaccination or herd immunity and there are other species of termites when they get infected they leave the colony that's quarantine so are we so great is it our technology of just we don't pay attention we stop paying attention similarly you know all of us such a great species such a intellectual species but look at what happens when common property gets damaged when our road gets damaged we know what happens 
nobody really cares it's not my job and then eventually you know we raise issues uh, there are protests and somehow the government repairs it but termites and ants they also have common property and i think a lot of us know a termite mound if it gets damaged and if you come back to it about to 6 hours 8 hours or sometimes 20 hours that is repaired now in terms of design the complexity of living systems might be very different but in terms of design the individual termite is also a selfish uh, entity it wants to survive we must at least wonder how do they do it who decides is it my job to do it do i need to take a sanction how do i get the team together where do i procure resources context might be different but issues are very similar if we don't have the answer doesn't matter but have we lost our sense of wonder we are so economy present that are we becoming place blind and we are so enamored by these new words we have created sequestering carbon but really ask ourselves is it new the planet you know the coral reefs the soil the plants they have been sequestering carbon for millions and billions of years all we are doing is we are simply mimicking what the planet is already doing and giving it a fancy name so we are not the first ones to think of sequestering carbon we are just getting back in resonance with the patterns which were already happening similarly there is so much talk about circular economy closed loop systems as if it is a new invention or some great technology if you go to a million old forest or whatever have you ever seen waste we've never seen waste this is the way life works there is never waste that's it we give it a fancy name circular economy actually you will see the design principles are exactly what nature is doing just by giving it nice names doesn't mean we've invented something new so a lot of things that we think we are coming up with new it is my humble submission if we really look deep we are simply going back to the way the planet works so i wanted to start by saying that nature has already solved many of the problems we grapple with today it's just that our current education system the way our economy is working we we we've stopped paying attention in fact there are many times where in engineering colleges we give them a mock problem to to come up with pumping solutions for water and they will sit beneath a tree with a laptop googling and only when you tell them that this tree has been pumping water without electricity without a breakdown uh, that's when they suddenly feel oh i didn't i i didn't realize that uh, so what kind of place our an awareness we are creating and this could be a major problem uh, some of the authors are saying that the big problem won't, won't be attention deficit disorder it will be nature deficit disorder so why we also need to know that and why should we even be looking at nature what's the science behind it is morality is it a new fancy word earlier it was you know sustainability today it is biomimicry like another fashion accessory this will go this might not go because this might be it in might be early days but why i feel so is because if you really see planet planetary conditions are the same whether it's for a ant or whether for a president or whether you are a building if you are on this planet there are certain non negotiable operating conditions in which everything operates and living systems and abiotic conditions and biotic conditions have been co evolving for 3.8 billion years on this earth and what we see today around us has gone the rigorous r and d of 3.8 billion years out of which 99.9% of all planet plants and animals that came have died so what exists is our best bet to tell us that this works could there be a better solution could be but in all humility not only do we don't know the complex interlinkages interdependencies and correlations but we don't even know what we don't know and that leads to unintended consequences and now i think although i talk to you as just a small emissary uh, even at the top think tank levels there is a humility to understand that 
uh, whatever we might do, we really don't know the unintended consequences. They might happen 200 years later, 1000 years later, we don't know. So the best thing is at least look at how is nature solving the same problem. And also look at how is why is nature not solving that problem the way you are solving. And that can prevent a lot of unintended consequences. So Prashant, uh, uh, let me just Sorry. interrupt you. Uh, could you just press hide on that uh, small bar that is coming? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that will help because we are not able to see what is written beneath that. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't realize. No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So the other thing which, uh, and I'll probably go faster because this is really preaching to the converted or maybe, uh, you know, preaching to the gurus. So. The other thing which uh, I have discovered is that a lot of the ancient knowledge which we've neglected and foo food, uh, though it might not be very sophisticated, but there's a lot uh, that, that we need to revisit because that was primarily developed in ecological context while our current knowledge is very strongly rooted in economic context. And although these are very obvious things, but they require deep attention. Uh, this is my view that we we have to invest the kind of time and energy to revisiting some of these things and maybe it's a good time to slow down because gandhi said that speed is irrelevant if you're going in the wrong direction i think all of us agree we are going in the wrong direction the question is so where, what is the right right direction can we trust anybody i don't think we can trust humans very well everybody seems to have an agenda and also i think we have created certain slogans we've lived by and i think those slogans in isolation don't make sense so we've had human-centered design and we've realized that just being human-centered doesn't work for all of us who've been in the industry it becomes consumer-centered eventually it's market-centered just being economy-centered doesn't work just being technology-centered doesn't work they all are important but in isolation they don't work so in biomimicry the overarching principle is be life centered, life with a capital L, all life. So with that, you say, okay, because eventually what are you trying to sustain? Whatever we are trying to do is for life. Once life goes, the earth will sustain itself. It has no problem. The question is how? That's where biomimicry comes in because we need a structured methodological uh, database driven approach. Uh, so that we can translate our industrial challenges, our design challenges into biology and go back to uh, to our uh, to our drawing boards with the biological information. And the great thing about biomimicry also is that outside of the industrial human being, no other species has taken intellectual property, right? So it's your biggest creative commons. So there again, we aren't the smartest species, the original creative commons, the commons is nature. You will never get an IPR notice from a bird or from some system whose technology we will take. So how do we browse this library? Because there are so many species, there is no uh, traditionally intense standard. We are told take PCME and biology goes to otherwise as if biology doesn't have any physics, chemistry or, or design. That's a huge error. In fact, it's only now that I am di discovering, I am a late arrival uh, to this knowledge, but the kind of uh, designs and engineering biology has is amazing. So biomimicry, we call it the great old new idea. Why great old? Pretty obvious. No, it's nothing new, just a fancy word, but it's required because although it's very, very old in the last 100 to 200 years, we have moved both emotionally and physically away from nature. One of the big problems that I see, and I'm sure you also will feel, a lot of us grew up with stories of nature which were told, handed to us by our parents or grandparents. Now, how many of us are doing that job? So this is a very urgent tipping point that the next generation will not even have these stories. And what it could lead to, uh, of course, there's a lot of research on that, both in terms of health and also in terms of direction. Where do we develop? In which direction do we want to go? Is it going to be based on who was the most eloquent, who had the best degrees and most citations? They will decide the destiny of the planet. Or is there inherently certain objective parameters 
which come from the planet itself. Um, I remember as a designer, somebody telling me, what does the place tell you? And I never really understood what do they mean. But in biomimicry, there are certain methods where we can understand what the place wants. So the great part is that over the last 30, 40, 50 years, many scientists, uh, I am just a communicator, I'm not a scientist. They've been trying to decipher, are there any universal principles that we can take from living systems, which can act like a unifying uh, guideline for everything that we do. It could be politics, it could be engineering, it could be design, it could be uh, you know, consumption, agriculture. So they seem to agree on a very simple design brief. So if we say, forget you, me, we have our own design briefs. What is nature's design brief? Now, the interesting thing is it's very simple. Nature's design brief is that create conditions conducive to life. Life with a capital L, all life. That's the design brief. Our job is to deconstruct it into parameters, measurable parameters. How do we create that? So here's, we started teaching biomimicry five years ago, and you can understand how difficult it was. Uh, our first talk, we had to tempt people with free coffee, free cake, and only five people came. Uh, it's been a tough journey, but today we've done more than 170 biomimicry workshops and talks. And I think it is the only subject which has been taught across disciplines. So right from IITs to NID, now they are giving credits to, we did our first credit bearing course at NIFT, to business schools, to ISRO, to Shishugriya. I'm not saying this because I want to claim anything or being. What I'm saying is because in biology, nature doesn't care about physics, chemistry, maths. It's about patterns and phenomena. So here we were struggling to see that we need to take things holistically, but we didn't have a platform. And by accident, when I look back and I see this is a perfect platform, we are able to successfully conduct these across in multidisciplinary formats, primarily because everybody's looking at the phenomena. They are not worried about physics, chemistry, maths, or design, or architecture. So that's the other thing which I wanted to share with you that uh, we actually have something which is working. It needs to be developed. And these are some of the uh, validation that these are the places where, where biomimicry has been taught uh, successfully. And I just wanted to share a few student projects. We don't get the opportunity to do large courses, you know, like two months, three months. We get five days at max, 10 days. And in that, all sorts of students come off on art students, DCOM students. So this is a, from Bangalore. This is the Srishti school. Most of us are aware of that school. And these were two art students first. And they've designed a, a system of of transporting uh, crude oil and uh, they realize that the barrels actually because of the vibrational load when they are transported in trucks number one there's a lot of uh, damage to the edges and also the weight to weight to uh, to load ratio is very high so they just made these hexagonal a uh, barrel stacking system and they ran, ran it through a computer simulation and they found that the vibrational load really comes down and also you you get more uh, uh, more more oil and with less weight of material for the packaging similarly this was a project done by nid graduates for uh, looking at a cat how a cat falls and they designed a cell phone which would always fall on its back they designed gunny bags which would always land on the right surface. Uh, this was a project by Ahmedabad University students inspired by a rat where kangaroo rat actually doesn't ever drink water. It has to use the water that it gets from its food. So it has amazing filtration systems. So these kids designed, and I don't know any of these things. We just inspire them to look at the process and then they come up with their own ideas. Uh, this was another NID project where looking at how the Venus flytrap works, they've designed, uh, you know, 
child proof electrical socket self closing tiffin boxes uh, this is another project again an nid project where inspired by fire ants they are looking at how if there are floods you know especially the climate change we have such a large coastline uh, these ants actually individually they drown but they can self organize and almost behave like a material which floats when it floods and they can float for months and months so the idea is what is the design principle where a single component sinks but it gets into a configuration that together it will float for months and months so if you understand that design principle then that can be translated into uh, usable things and they were uh, they realized that instead of fighting floods why don't you float with the floods at least in the extreme areas there, there couldn't be so they are they had suggested certain boundary walls in coastal areas which would end up becoming rafts this is water management systems that how does uh, why how come the forests don't have such water logging problems like our cities do how is water managed uh, just understanding how there are three layers of canopies how that water is slowed down it percolates it has a certain way of uh, transpiring uh, so we don't have to mimic the forest but we have to understand the design principle and if we understand the design principle and no matter what we are making we simply make sure that uh, we understand that circle and we also take into account the additional load that our designs are created mostly we would end up without compromising on our development while not harming these ecosystems so it really comes from do you even know what you are disturbing so often we just go ahead uh build and the only thing we know is this is your far this is your uh, build, you know these many windows you have to give but what all you have disturbed is not even accounted for so so that's where uh, understanding these systems from nature uh, really help us this is another very interesting project where actually we didn't expect anything these were a few people who wanted to design biodegradable chip packaging and we just asked them to look at nature and they realize in nature uh, actually the packaging tells you when the food is really bad but our packaging is so dumb it just has a date whether the food is still good or bad we really don't know you have to go by that date and that leads to so much unnecessary waste so can our packaging uh, tell us real time if uh, if the food is gone bad so uh, this was again we did a workshop for mahindras and mahindra so these were corporate guys 90 of their managers and they came up with nine problems so there were many interesting problems one of the interesting problem where it was simply the gear you know you have blind spots uh they were struggling with uh, tractors not starting in very very cold climate like ladakh you know because their traditional market was tropics like punjab and they were only looking at what they already knew which is engineering and we simply said that who would not have this problem in cold and uh, in e after initial hesitation and when you start thinking like children you will say okay a polar bear wakes up he even wakes up after hibernation there are fish in the arctic they don't freeze and after that initial thing is crossed then comes the question how come how come and then the exploration of design principles eventually they are on the same planet it doesn't change for them there is something in the design whether it is heat retention capability enabled by certain uh, hollow uh, tubular hair or is it a anti freeze compound in the fish blood and suddenly what was looking like a distant engineering problem starts becoming uh, something that you've just wondering why weren't we thinking like that and uh, this is something we frequently find that we are so economy present we might be place blind the answer might be just next to us so this is another very interesting thing because as i said uh, we just tell anything that this is you don't trust trust us no that nature can nature has the answers let's experiment let's go ahead and uh, throw some questions so this was again a group at nid kurukshetra who looked at teamwork that can we learn something about teamwork and see ants and all it's difficult because most of them are sterile different issues but pack dogs pack animals they have all sorts of issues very similar to us but how come they are so uh, good at teamwork I mean, I mean, and we have all sorts of issues 
So they wanted to understand, and these are some of the best hunters in the wild. You know, they they have a success rate of 80 to 85 percent, which is huge. And you know, they can't sulk if somebody does doesn't do what they want. In our teams, you know what happens: we sulk and things break down. So how does how do they develop all this? So just by understanding how these dogs play a lot, and in playing, what are the design principles of their play, which enable such bonding? and such performance during unpredictable circumstances of a hunt small thing like that young students first year and they came up with thing which honestly i felt you know we go to management consultants and they give you all the jargon these were very simple principles and uh, eventually they were designing a app for it and uh, this is again a very interesting thing uh, where uh, where you know once we challenged them to come up with anything they wanted to come up with something for gender violence that how can we reduce gender violence especially against women young women uh, in a conservative background we had no idea we just said okay go ahead let's ask nature where does it work where does it not work so often uh, it does help if we have a biologist in the team which is 99% of the time not happening but at this time we did and these girls studied certain networks in nature where the systems are very very egalitarian and they realized that the fundamental principle of that was a very robust system of feedback and information networks and there was multiplicity of routes and frequency of exchange of information now once they understood this principle uh, then they realized that in human society these girls they realize that for us there are very few routes it's either my family or my elders and in both these routes i find shame and fear um so let's take away everything and make it into a design thing so you need to increase number one the number of routes of feedback and information and number two the frequency the feedback loop that's it and suddenly what was seeming like such a big problem these young kids were 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 solving it at a very system level so there have been many many areas of great humility that uh, the problem is understanding getting deeply into understanding the design principles that's not easy because uh, because biology is not taught to us like that and it's not available but once we start looking at framing our problems often we are surprised by the kind of solutions that happen so there are many things that uh, they have done i uh, i can't put all of them but even something like you know uh, they went uh, there was a project where they were working with uh, pradhan mantri awas yojana and they they wanted to collect data and nobody would give them data so they said let's use biomimicry you claim that nature has answers so i said yeah, i don't have the answer you go ahead and then they diagnosed the problem the problem was of trust they didn't trust these people so how does nature in nature you know pack animals of of similar species but belonging to different packs how do they build trust so that became the design challenge and by understanding how uh, between two packs trust is built they realized that again a lot of play needs to happen that's a controlled situation where they judge you and after a certain amount of play has happened you begin to trust and they started organizing what they thought was close to play like a dandia wind and they got all the data why i'm saying all these things is because uh this has been my journey of validating what i intuitively believed and uh, now i very strongly believe that there could be a huge opportunity to look at our social systems and economic systems uh in fact more and more uh, my view is nature does not use morality our species does and morality doesn't work nature uses design and that's a provocative thing but i think there's a lot of potential there that how do you design your systems that you don't need morality so for example uh, in living systems it's very difficult to manipulate feedback uh in our systems that's the way the world works uh you know the people who who control the flows of information and feedback 
make the entire system dysfunctional so i was fascinated and this is a question which you know i look at nature that nature has somehow uh made the information and feedback network such that they do not they are unable to comprehend or manipulate the flows of information and feedback which is their job to do what a beautiful design if we could incorporate it in our systems that would be wonderful in some ways we are evolving in that direction you say they are they are using ai for a lot of uh, hr these days but if we really go deep you'll see a lot of it is uh, is really mimicking what nature already does in all humility i just want to share one more thing you know 1.3 billion years ago nature invented sex now let's look at it as a design thing what does it do earlier your industrial production was that you had one model and every model next model was exactly the same it was self replication what does sexuality does now two parties when they transact they create a independent and new ledger record x mr x chromosome meets y chromosome and the next new ledger record has all the information of x and y but it's unique it is distributed and decentralized stored in a network of cells isn't this exactly the design principle of blockchain in fact when i mentioned that to a couple of scientists who were working on they said this is way more sophisticated so often it is the depth of understanding the design principles of how nature is solving these problems uh, that we realize that we aren't the first ones to, uh, to to really come up with these solutions but as we said and began that biomimicry uh, is more than just emulation and what i have spoken about all this is the intellectual stuff Uh, that's what people like uh, most of biomimicry unfortunately is a few examples which are doing the right but what you will see is when we are trying to propagate biomimicry we are using a circular symbol why because it's about wholeness to start thinking in complete systems we might be specialist in one thing but to recognize that we need all aspects of education and practice So what in biomimicry we say is non-negotiable is three aspects: ethos, reconnect, and emulate. Ethos is very simple, but we give it equal importance and non-negotiable. Ethos is create conditions conducive to life. Pretty simple. Emulate. Emulate is the intellectual bit which we talked about. That at least look at nature. That how is nature solving the problem that you are trying to solve? You don't have to necessarily copy it, but at least know. and uh, usually once you know it uh, then emulation happens but the most important third aspect is reconnect reconnect is the missing part in both our education and our practice reconnect is something which we are almost ashamed to say that is reawaken your emotional connect with nature to love nature because it's all a pretense you will not fight to save something you don't love but how do you teach love that's a big problem so when we really say that by bio, true biomimicry is when you do all three and we feel this is a big shift which should happen not only in design but in all education and all practice because if you just keep keep on creating a leadership which might be very clever but it lacks love you've got a dysfunctional society you've created students you've created an entire uh, judgment system so this is what we call a uh, true biomimicry and this is unfortunately not covered in media and ignored but i think this is the most important part of it, that it it is a combination of emulation ethos and reconnect now the so, good thing so is Prashant, that but just one quick time check so i think we have another 20 minutes uh, so yeah, just so, uh, letting you know okay okay so basically a lot of these things so the good thing is that there are certain things happening uh, at least but these things are not being covered in media so i i i want to that there is at least some thinking on what is the role of business in society so earlier it was philanthropy you earn your money do whatever you just give back now corporate now there is increasing talk that the very purpose of business should be to create shared value not shareholder value but shared value and not shared just with humanity but with our environment this is a big thing at least all of us i think should try and amplify this voice and there are other things like economic visibility of nature true value accounting and the big Uh, differences from human centered to life centered and uh, you know usually people say is there a take away 
so i always say that to me a good takeaway is that uh, like we have a habit of brushing our teeth at least we should start asking this question what would nature do here it's perfectly all right not to have the answer but it's not all right not to have the question because uh, i feel the questions we ask today will guide the shape of our future so i actually then thank all my teachers but my teachers include cyanobacteria to follow homo homo sapiens so thank you and most important lest we forget the emotional connect with nature so that was my little spiel for for nature thank you so much prashant i think we have a uh, lot of questions coming up and the first one will be from ganesh ganesh go ahead hey thanks <coughs> uh thanks nimish first of all for organizing this and <clears throat> prakash really a uh, very insightful presentation i have a question and comment actually yeah okay. it would be nice to see you <laughs> ah you want me to <laughs> okay <laughs> one second i i was signs of signs of life <laughs> i'll try to show my face but uh ganesh you go from go behind go ahead so, ask ask your question we'll see you in in a bit okay yeah so the question is you know all your uh, all the uh, i'll try to show my face as far as possible but no very like the sorry. principles that you said and uh, i was wondering when you gave the examples right you know those examples were how to transport more crude oil in less cost less material right or how to uh, you know make the tractor usable in the ice uh, this thing or even wonderful was how to pack more chips uh, inside uh, the so all this you know when uh, i feel it is like trying to solve our economic problems again taking help of biomimicry so why solve this problem these are completely unnecessary things at one extreme if you really take an uh, take a environmental stand we shouldn't be needing so much crude oil in the first place and a few days ago when i presented i really first hand experienced the evils of tractor in my farmland you know it compresses the layer compacts the soil water can't go in it becomes like almost a concrete after tractor plowing so Gan ganesh so, you will have to summarize your question because we have only 15 minutes more yes. yeah so what i'm saying is my question is and that's why i said a comment nimish it's not just a question so mm -hmm. although i like your principles i find that those principles are being used again against nature to just foster economy so sorry for my direct uh, kind of you know uh, question but i feel we shouldn't be solving the problems we should be eliminating the problems here yeah no what you said is uh, at one level it is the reaction but but i dare say ganesh that's a bit poetic uh, between the ideal state and the state you are in even in nature you have to work with what you have uh, otherwise uh, you know things don't get anywhere so even in nature you will see a lot of mutations will come 99% of the species will die and of what survives 0.1% is better fit that gets better fit so a small amount of adaptation uh, needs to get direction so what we are saying is in any case whether you take biomimicry or don't take biomimicry you are looking for a solution so might as well look at biomimicry will you get to the ideal state no but you will you will at least get into a direction you will become less bad but at least you know where the good is right now we really don't know where the good is we all are very very brilliant but as i said it's a cacophony of brilliance Uh, so in it is my humble view uh, that that we need to agree on some common lighthouse but we will be all constrained by you have to work with what you have but what is the direction that's where i feel biomimicry can be a really good lighthouse uh, hi hi nimish i just could want to add a small point here to what uh, the gentleman said uh mr ganesh uh, the very reason why we actually have to look at uh, this whole way of biomimicry is 
we are the ones who have created the problem so to understand what the problem itself go back to biomimicry and see who created this problem then the solution is there in that itself it is so spiritually connected to aham brahmasmi that i am the creator of a problem so i have a, a solution in me that is what i understand from uh, the talk today thank you yeah uh, thanks sagar <coughs> Any other questions? Very interesting topic. I'll just wait here because, you know, <clears throat> I feel ultimately the purpose matters, not the means. So the purpose should be to reduce and not promote the economy. I mean, if you want to really emulate the nature. Okay. Yeah, I I would encourage yeah, everybody to spoke to about now this in a different chat earlier, right? Uh, if you have to eliminate need, you have to eliminate greed first of all, right? So that's a different topic altogether. For a different <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that is what I had typed. Yeah, yeah. But I promise you, um, there are enough people working on those directions. I am not the expert. Uh, there is a lady called Jamie Brown Hanson. she is reimagining the banking system and uh, the economic systems based on the way nature works uh, to give you an example festo is an uh, a german major who works on the pneumatic systems their uh, two latest design in pneumatics are based on a bat and a bee itself and the drone that we uh, watch see in uri movie that is based on the movement of the bat's wings and they uh, the researchers there have found the answer in the movement of the bat and how i can say that they are one of my clients and that's how i can say and i have used honeycomb packaging to uh, do this packaging of hydro uh, hydraulic cylinders you can imagine 250 kg worth of cylinder earlier we used to use wood packing that is jungle wood but the very reason that we wanted to reduce usage of wood we went into honeycomb structure uh, paper packaging and it really solved our problems and yes we have solutions in biology yeah and also usually what we do is that um, you know there are 26 life principles which are measurable uh, what we say is that you don't have to meet all of them you can't you know but at least you know where the gap is so we have a gap analysis and we say that it's a living gap analysis because as you say oh yesterday technology was not available today it is let me close this gap usually what happens is if you you know in hindi we say jo dikhta nahi wo hota nahi so if you don't see it it doesn't get done so if you do a gap analysis with the biomimicry principles at least you know uh, that these are gaps which nature is doing like this today i don't know how to do it so there is a gap but tomorrow when it is done often we don't even realize and uh, that creates incoherent development so so it can be a uh, be a good tool is it a perfect tool no but amongst what i see this is a very uh, this seems to be amongst the best and now coming to my question uh, wh- how long do you think this whole biomimicry can come into the educational institution as a proper subject or at least as an elective so that when guys i mean when kids are coming out uh we already have addressed this gap of uh, thinking versus actuality <sighs> well it can be very fast or very slow i'll be very honest to you it depends on uh, it depends on uh, because today we have the technology we need to have the political and the financial intent so i often say biomimicry is like a very pretty seed it's like a oak tree seed uh you keep it in a kitchen cabinet you take it out for a conference or a talk like this then you keep it back then you keep in wondering why when will it grow so it will grow when we find the right land and nourishment there is no rocket science all we need is a consensus and say let's let's put our hands together let's do it and in fact i'll share with you i feel it's not just education Uh, we been pitching for funds and we said you need a new mythology you need a m- new mythology of technology mythology is more powerful than uh, than education uh, all these things can be done uh, but uh, my sense is today i find a big funding or you find or whoever is doing it maybe in 3 years it will be everywhere because 
look at the kind of uh, time we are in you distribution is no longer a problem you've got youtube you've got training here the question is who's going to fund it because uh see see and i i don't fault them people will say that a lot of people will will feel disengaged you know uh, that oh, oh, i have been doing sustainability for 30 years what about me who's this new kid on the block so all these are real human problems so my instructor used to say the first thing is to quieten human cleverness uh, create a sense of uh, non threatening anxiety before these things happen so i guess it will be a bit of spirituality and bit, bit of science but it can be done right now all it needs is resources that's all all the content in fact a lot of content right from k12 uh, to engineering colleges to business colleges not more than 2 years all these courses can be done teacher training can be done no big deal nice thanks so prashant i have a comment and then maybe you can react to that so you know i think we have as a species we have evolved into a into a selfish competitive uh, species so you know when we talk about sustainability and um, if we have to come together as as a species as uh, maybe it needs a higher level of consciousness i mean it's consciousness also which plays a role in us being more competitive and selfish but maybe it needs a higher level of consciousness to become um you know more cooperative so to say what what is what, what are your thoughts on that see personally i don't express my personal view but i am with you in fact in a recent uh, workshop when i wrote biomimicry the o n m i write wrote like om so that was a biome over like that it is you know if nature is outside you nature is also inside you and the western science forgets that it is also only observing and uh, we actually in our meditate uh, we do meditate in our workshops and i say if you reconnect with yourself you reconnect with nature because you are nature scientifically this can be contested and i wouldn't say it in a different forum but i feel this is a forum which is gentler so i can express that uh, that's a dimension i i agree with you uh, but having said that i think we haven't asked the right question we haven't asked that so how should uh, how should we be organizing ourselves is there a scale dependence to a social animal no other animal outside of you know a tribe of 1000 lives with alpha males uh we are still living with alpha males and there are 2 crores of us in a city and all uh, all you know if you really look at nature the ruler becomes rule based there is a scale dependence uh, you have to change rules as your scale changes now this is not morality this is not religion this is what nature is doing uh, i don't see much work happening or even discussion happening in these areas uh, so i i have a feeling that number one it unifies everybody you know uh, nobody disagrees on nature whether it's a scientist or a spiritual guy everybody agrees on nature but uh, but if we contextualize it that how should be organized or how should be sharing resources uh, at what point point does locking up resources become uh, useless and uh, and sharing resources needs to happen and these are actually real things you see in nature we are already becoming like that you know if you see the new business models ola uber uh, co working spaces that is accidental resonance with nature's principles um i i don't have the time to you know we have these 26 principles if you look at these 26 principles you'll say you know that's where we are going in any case in a hap haphazard fashion but if we do it more consciously i think we'll be better off but that's just a provocation i challenge all of you to explore you know look at nature i could be fooling you but you know i think we have time for possibly just one more question if anybody who has not asked a question yet could possibly do that okay so uh, prashant since there are no more questions uh, unmesh you were saying something yeah maybe just what it a you know bonds of something which probably might be a ripple our designers you know our design the way they are educated 
are adequate enough to practice biomimicry uh, or we need something more to their studies or researches? Yeah, my guess is that uh, designers have the inherent potential, but uh, but they need a lot of uh, nudging and uh, uh, and what should I say? You know, somehow the designer, even our design institutes, are outside of any university. It's like you're telling a poet that I'll give you four word, words now make poetry. They have no clue what is happening in material science. They have no clue what is happening in other. So, but they have tremendous system integration skills. So what we have found, and we just finished a course for NID, that we just let them that, you know, you know, you, you have to now read a paper. Don't worry whether you don't understand it, but look at the possibility, not the technology. Mm -hmm. So that way we find that they are, it really unleashes creativity. They have become a little constrained because now they feel if I can't make it or can't explain how it is made, then I shouldn't try it. And uh, I think you're seeding this, we are seeding the space. Uh, in fact, I'll be honest to you, we've started a new one called word called design fiction. And I told them your design should be like science fiction. Don't worry, <laughs> you know, uh, we will see how it is made. So taking the fear out is very important. And once you take the fear out, they are best. I think a designer has the system integration mindset. And that's a very good thing. You're true, true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, can I ask my question? Yeah, you have 10 seconds to do that. All right, this is I'm Prakash, I'm a practicing architect, and uh, the session was quite informative. Uh, you spoke about uh, hexagon barrels, we spoke about fire ants floating together, and the cat's uh, safe jump, and a few more examples were quite interesting. Uh, being an architect, uh, uh, my curiosity is more towards the climate and uh, building design. So in India, we always uh, fight, as architects, we always fight hard with, uh, you know, uh, having uh, to handle heat gain in the buildings. Can you please uh, uh, take an example uh, of any any similar uh, uh, biomimicking uh, example for, you know, something related to climate and building design? Yeah, so one of the big areas, in fact, is building design. And uh, one of the biggest area of innovation is building skins. Uh, eventually, architecture is all about skins, you know. Uh, you put skins and you are left with space and we call that architecture. So it's really about how do you make a skin responsive. So uh, what we are talking about is smart skins which can breathe, which can respond. So a lot of work, uh, Prakash, is being done and uh, uh, you, there is an architect called Doris Al Young, I think. Uh, she's created these, you know, pine cones have this ability to close and open on their own without any electrical wire just based on the response of, uh, so if you can accelerate that uh, that uh, that smartness of the material, then you can create responsive skins. So a lot of work, not only that, that regulates uh, heat gain, but can you regulate uh, pollution, you know, like eggs. Eggs don't allow toxic gases to come inside or cocoons, they don't allow toxic gases and they don't have any electricity. They do it on their own. So a lot of these technologies are, uh, are being inspired and new materials are being uh, made. Uh, similarly, thermal regulation of a building, uh, you know, inspired by termite mounds. So architecture is a big, big user of biomimicry. A lot of work happening. Self-healing concrete uh, is already been uh, made. Uh, Self-cleaning paints, a lot of these inspired by biological organisms. There's a lot of work. I mean, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, you just Google and you'll see. This is, in fact, one of the most well-researched uh, area of, uh, of biomimicry. Building skin. So there are building skin labs in uh, Harvard, which is called the Weiss Institute, MIT, Arizona State University. Unfortunately, I would like to say India also, but I haven't seen those kind of case studies coming out of here. But a lot of work. And it's not rocket science. So Prashant, uh, you know, we come to the end of the hour and I think it was it was really insightful to get your uh, views on biomimicry and to many of us, I mean, we have, we have been exposed to this, but, you know, hearing from you, it made a lot of sense. 
and as ganesh said you know i think there is a reason to debate and i think we'll create maybe more forums to you know debate what you're saying and you know other people can have their own views and maybe we can you know extend this conversation a little further from where it is today so so with that let me uh, thank you on behalf of everyone here and we will uh, i i'm sure if anybody wants to get in touch with prashant you can do so on biomimicry india you will find prashant's coordinates there and please reach out to him there thank you so much prashant thank you thank, thank you prashant everyone. thanks so much bye bye thank you